I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 20th of July, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua, and today we're getting a parrot. Yeah, for real. He's 27. His name is Burrito Gordo, and he is coming to live with us here in Leon. He needs a place to live, but we're going to talk about all of that when we get back from the bump. <laughs> is Burrito Gordo. He is our new parrot who is living here. This is his new cage. We're here in the house, and I'm not gonna do too much filming with him, but today was an adventure getting him, but we wanna start by introducing him because he's such a handsome bird, and uh, we have terrible light in here, so it's really hard to be able to get footage of him, but I don't know how much he likes cameras. He's always a little bit shy about the cameras, but he is very cool. He is very talkative and we are going to be talking about him, but I'm gonna go outside because it's better light and better audio. And hopefully the, the microphone is working after yesterday's disaster with the microphone. Some days we just have bad microphone. You know, I do so many of these videos and we have on average such good success that the occasional issue, I really can't look at it as an issue. We still have really good success rate. So we're gonna step outside, but, oh, he's coming to investigate. He does not like the light on the camera though. So there he is. All right, let's head outside. So if you follow along on my channel, you know that for the last two days, I've been in Managua two days ago. I came in pretty late at night, legitimately, like it was last thing. And then yesterday I was here in Managua, well there in Managua all day. We did the liberation events, the, the anniversary, uh, all that party stuff. And then today, first thing I gotta get up and get back to uh, Leon, cause I gotta get back to work and everything. So I'm not here in Managua for very long, uh, but we did get it, managed to get a little bit of footage, which is a lot of fun for you guys. I'm glad we got to do something really different and I can see already from the feedback on those episodes that people appreciate that we did something a little bit different, which I always try to do. It's just very hard. My life is very busy. So this morning I got up and had to go all the way across Managua and hunt down where uh, where the Gordito, as we call him, has been living. So he, a little bit of background, he's 27 years old. He is um, the parrot or was the parrot of a friend of ours, grandmother. She is no longer able to care for the parrot. He is 27 years old, which is nearing the end of life for a parrot. This is a Nicaraguan green conure, also known as a Pacific parakeet, uh, but they are very popular, uh, po very populous here in Nicaragua and north. We're kind of the southern extent of their range and to the north they go up into Mexico, but they're just along the, the coast there. Uh, some things we've learned is the designations like parrot and parakeet and conure don't really have specific de definitions. Parrot is the family and all parrots, parakeets, macaws, uh, conures, they're all parrots. So he is legitimately a parrot. Uh, some people refer to him as a parakeet. They're on the small side of parrots, but he's not small. He is on the large side of the type of parrot that he is though. Um, and uh, so the Pacific parakeet is the general name for it, but he's much larger than Americans think of as a parakeet. Uh, he is what most people think of as a conure. Conure are often larger than parakeets, smaller than what we often call parrots. However, there is no scientific designation for conure. That is mostly a bird keeping name. So if you're keeping birds as pets, you may call them a conure, uh, but who knows? Here, they're referred to as a parrot or a loro. So that is what he is known as. He's just known as a Nicaraguan green parrot here, uh, which is different than the green cheeked. If you're looking it up, you're gonna find a ton of stuff on green cheeked parrots. He is not. He is a uh, Pacific parakeet or a Nicaraguan green conure. Those are the names you'll find him under uh, if you look up what he is. So research says they often live to about 30 years old. However, there's not a lot of data on well-kept Nicaraguan green conures. So there are some sources that say they may live to 45. So he may have a lot of time left to go. Uh, he may be just a little bit past midlife. We don't know. 
Uh, he is quite healthy, it seems, uh, but he has been lonely. He has not been speaking for the last few years, is my understanding, but he used to be talkative. And uh, so he is in need of being rescued. He needs uh, immediate attention, simply that he's not getting the interaction he used to, and that's important for his health. Uh, he also needs to be well fed. He needs to be just taken care of and all that kind of stuff. And so we are immediately taking possession of him today to make sure he has a place. And we've been preparing for this. Dominica has been researching being the, the parents of a parrot. Um, she's been doing research on the specific type of parrot. We had a custom cage manufactured for us, much larger than he's used to. Uh, I'll show a photo or a video of, of what his old cage was, which was not small, but this is much larger now with what he has. So this is really good that he's gonna have more space, more stuff to explore. Uh, we're still learning. We're going to figure out where he's going to go. The cage we got is actually so large, it's actually a problem bringing it into the house. It's very difficult to do. Only a couple doors in the house will accommodate it. Um, so that is the start of the adventure. And we're excited. The kids are looking forward to having a parrot in some ways, and in other ways, they're really annoyed there's going to be more animals in the house, and often it falls to them to take care of them. The more things that are here, the more someone has to be here constantly overseeing the animals. Parrots especially need a lot of attention because they are social, they're super intelligent, they live a really long time, and they, you can't really let them out of their cages without a lot of preparation and planning and training. So that's going to be really difficult. So we don't know how to feed them. We don't know anything about parrots. I've never had a bird at all. So this is going to be a big learning curve for all of us. So my first challenge of the morning was getting in the car and driving all the way across Managua into a zone pretty close to a little bit south of the airport and locating uh, our Gordito in his current home. That took a bit of work. That was like hard hard to find, um, even with someone guiding me, even with directions, even with a GPS, very hard to track down. Got there, um, and then we had to figure out how to transport him. I thought, and Dominica thought, that he was coming in his cage. Well, his cage is way too big for the car. Like, that's not gonna happen. It has, it has metal legs that are part of the cage. Like, there's no way. If it didn't have the metal legs, maybe we would have figured out something, but no, not with the, not with the legs, not a possibility. So he has to come uh, in a box of some sort, which they didn't really have one. So we ended up putting him into a printer box with holes. And uh, as long as he takes care of himself, he'll be safe. But if he gets out, he's a problem. So we put him into this box and everyone said, no, he'll be fine, he'll be fine. He'll just, you know, he'll just ride along in the box. So we put him in the box in the car and I've got to drive alone. Now, uh, Chris, who grew up with him, is going to go on a motorcycle just behind me and follow me to Leon. Uh, and if anything happens, he's there to help. But he's not in the car with me. It is just me and a parrot that I just met in a car driving from Managua to Leon. I can't go super fast and there's a lot of traffic because it's Managua. So I end up driving, we had to stop. We put him in the car. I'm like, okay, this, this is not give me a lot of confidence. And you don't have to worry about it. If you're worried, like, does he have air and stuff? First of all, we poked holes all through the box, like big holes right? To the point where he would like put his eye up to the hole. He looked like a dinosaur staring out at you. Like it was really funny because, you know, birds and dinosaurs are kind of the same thing. So he would stare out like Jurassic Park and I'm like, okay, that's disturbing. And it's a printer box. So those like big spots to put your hands through to, to carry it. I mean, he could, he could stick his head out. It didn't take very long. And the top is just sitting close. Like there's no, no air issues here whatsoever. If anything, I was actually worried that the blowing the air conditioning in the car would be too much wind. I could not open the windows because if for any reason he got out, boom, he'd be out the window. So I had to have the windows closed and had to be on air conditioning. So I was, I was actually concerned that he would get too cold, but I think he's fine. Uh, and I didn't turn it up very much. So driving through the city, it only took minutes before he was out the top of the box. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I jumped out of the car. Chris comes, he's like, no, no, he's fine. I'm like, he's not, he just opened the box. The drive a little bit farther, did the same thing again. Went and got something heavy, like a plastic thing to sit on top of the box. So he didn't like that. So then he started coming out the hand holes of the box and I realized he could get out. But Chris is like, I don't think he's going to. So he would get like halfway out and hang out of the box and look around. So if I put my hand over, he could nip me like, this was, this was a bit crazy. So I'm driving and I'm like trying to explain what's going on. I'm taking pictures. I'm taking a little bit of video as he's like looking around and he mostly did okay. He made some sounds. He did some shaking around, but it actually went okay. And I kept talking to him, which he likes. 
and made it to Lyon, had no major incident, which is amazing. I cannot believe that this didn't go more disastrous. Dominic is like, this is really bad. Like this bird is gonna climb out. It's gonna attack you in the car. You're gonna have an accident. So it's gonna be you and a bird locked in like, and parrots are powerful, right? They can take a finger off if they want to. I mean, it'd be hard, but they can do it. They have a lot of pressure in those beaks. So this is like having a, like a raptor loose in the car if he gets loose. And he's big, right? You say parakeet, you think like little thing. No, this is a large bird, a bird that could really do some damage, especially if you're driving. So that was really nerve wracking. But we got to Leon. Chris was with me the whole time, either directly in front of me or directly behind me. And uh, we managed to get in the, the cage. Uh, Chepe had come over. They had already brought the cage into the house, had it all set up. So all we had to do was take him out of the car and move him directly into the cage. So we got him into the cage. That actually went pretty well. We just, Chris was able to carry him in. Once he had Chris carry him, he was pretty, pretty low key. He and Chris are the same age. They lived their whole lives together, have always been there. Uh, so it's only recently since Chris has been working somewhere else that he can't be around him as much as he used to, because it's never his parrot. It was his grandmother's parrot. Um, and uh, so, so that's why he needs a home. Chris doesn't have a place for him. Um, so Chris came and put him into the cage and, and worked to calm him down and was like, okay, everything's fine. We're here. Here, there's people so we gave him some time to acclimate to just having the cage and he, he for a while he would just stand there right looking around but then he started exploring the cage and it didn't take too long he never actually seemed to be that stressed in the car he really seemed to be stressed right but but once he was home here and and into his new cage he seemed pretty chill uh, and of course he's very happy to have people around like he's excited about that the dogs we had to keep locked up because they were freaking out and uh, and so he was he was doing that. Now I want to I want to point out for people who because not everyone's going to stay and watch the whole video. I do not recommend at all whatsoever keeping birds as pets, especially not things like parrots. They live for so long. They have such unbelievable amounts of needs. Um, they they do not make good pets. Not because they aren't nice as pets. They're very pleasant to have around. They're beautiful. They're very interesting. They make interesting sounds. In the case of a, a of a green parakeet, they talk of a Pacific parakeet. Um, and, and, and this is a type that talks a lot, like very talkative, but he's not been talkative. And, uh, but it requires so much from you, such a commitment. It's so dangerous in case something ever happens to you, they become bonded with people. And it takes years and years to make these, these emotional commitments with an animal like this. And the chances that you're going to outlive them is very high, uh, that they're gonna outlive you, I'm sorry, is very high. And that can be a problem because their lives become very dependent on you when they're a pet. Um, if you have ones that are wild, Right, and you like go to, you have like a, a farm or something and they, yeah, you take care of them, they're, they're domesticated, but they're loose and they can live their life without you. That's quite a bit different. They're not exactly a pet. Maybe they're a pet, maybe they're fringe, but they're not like a pet pet. Um, and I know people who do that and they have macaws and they come and they hang out and that's really cool. And they live their own lives and they don't need you around and there's multiple ones and they, they're wild, but they, they can come into the house. And that happens a lot down here because parrots and macaws and parakeets are all native. And so this is not an exotic bird you're bringing from somewhere. This is something that was just caught in a tree somewhere. Uh, maybe now, I mean, maybe you have them and they have babies and then, but, but the initial ones are just local. And that's, that's really where they start from. And so uh, their ability to live in the wild if that's how they start, obviously you can't raise them at home and then turn them loose, you will have problems. And even to the point where uh, this type of, of parrot is known if they get loose to potentially go into trees and become stuck because they don't know how to get out of the tree. That's, that's a potential problem, like a real risk you have to have. Uh, you have to think about that you may be in a position where you have to climb a ladder and get them out of a tree. If they go up, you don't think about that with birds, but they can go up places that they may not be able to come back down and, and they don't know how to you know, find food and stuff on their own. And it's just very complicated. So you really make a commitment when you're dealing with a pet of this nature and they're so bonded to you, you can't just hand them off to someone. Someone else is not very likely to be able to handle them. If you have dogs, it's very different. Um, even though dogs are super social and really attached to their owners as mine are, and mine is sitting here watching me right now as I record, I will show her right there. You can see Mia hanging out. This is, this is what she does while I'm recording. She's always someone near me, somewhere near me, watching over me. Uh, but dogs are generally very easy to transfer to another person. They may be sad, but they're okay with the next person and they'll, they'll bond with them and, and immediately they're okay. They may feel stress and they may be unhappy, but they're able to do that. And dogs don't live a really long lifespan. So 
uh, compared to humans. Um, and so you, you are very easily, even late in life, can have a dog and still outlive it, right? You don't want to be, you know, 100 years old and getting a dog. That's, that's probably not appropriate in most cases. But if you're, if you're a good, healthy, any age, you can get a dog and um, most likely outlive it uh, without, um, you know, obviously there's, there's terrible accidents that can happen. But your, your expectation is not that your dog is going to outlive you in almost all cases. But with a parrot, in a great many cases, you're looking at an animal that is expected to outlive you if you take care of them. And that is very, very hard on them. It's a very difficult life. They, they really need to be wild. So I I'm, I'm want to say how much I don't recommend. And when you come to a place like Nicaragua, this is why I bring it up. If you're in the United States, you're, you're a little bit different. If you're coming to Nicaragua, you have such an unbelievable amount of options of pets. Uh, it is common here to have raccoons as pets. And they do make good pets. So feel free to have a raccoon pet. I don't know of any reason not to. But uh, you also have the opportunity of parrots and, and many different types of birds. Be very conscien conscientious when doing so. Some birds make better pets. Those with short lifespan, those that, that don't bond so strongly, those that it's easy to give them lots of space. Parrots, it's very hard to give them enough space to do what they need to do. And so that, that there's struggles. Like you, and, and you don't have flexibility. You have to have a house that's big enough to have a really big cage. Or you got to have them loose. you got to train them. All these things you have to, to, to figure out for the, for the well-being of your parrot. Um, but also here uh, is not uncommon to have monkeys as pets, which are horrible pets, right? Um, not because they're not cool, but because they live a really long time. They're incredibly intelligent. They need a family structure and there's no way to return them. Uh, you know, if, if anything changes in your life and very few places let you have them and it's, it's just all very complicated. And so that it's, it's such a temptation. Oh, oh, I'll just get some really cool pet or something. That's not a good idea. It's not a good idea in the United States. It is far worse here because you're presented with so many options so easily that it can be tempting to be like, yeah, I can do that. I'll just go do that. No random animals as pets. Make sure you know you're able to take care of them for their entire lifespan if that's something you're going to commit to. I had to upload all my original videos and make sure that the microphone is working so that I knew I would have a show for tonight because it is it is a problem uh, getting everything to upload um, with, with what happened yesterday, so I'm just a little bit worried. But it looks like things are working, fingers crossed, that I have not jinxed this for the second portion. Uh, so, so Gordy is moved in, Burrito Gordo, and it seems to be doing well. But we mostly had to leave him alone this evening. He's going to need time to adapt. He's going to need time to sleep because he is a parrot. He needs a lot of sleep time. Um, he goes to bed at like 8, 9 o'clock at night. But he did say a few things today. He said hello when we first got him. We were like, went to get him this morning before he knew he was being transported somewhere. He said, Hola, which is hilarious that the, the parrot actually greets you. And he actually says a number of things. He only said a few things today. We know he has in the past said a lot. And uh, we're hoping that with more people being around and more things going on and him being more stimulated and happy and healthy, that he'll talk more because that's a, a sign of a happy, healthy parrot. So um, so that's been that's been a big day. Now, speaking of parrots, this goes in with everything else that's going on. So that was our that's our animal experience and our whole day kind of centered around that. And the kids are very excited. They're frustrated and excited. It's, it, they're torn on the whole parrot thing. The other thing, and it is coincidental that it's all about parrots, is uh, I announced on the shorts just the other day, uh, uh, and, and I've used it on, uh, on the show, um, I'm now using uh, Nikogram as my place for hosting photos, where I do anything of Nicaragua. So if you want to see my work in photos, of course, you can always go to my Flickr. That's been there forever. I don't imagine that's going away. I have 84 million views on Flickr, so I have thousands of followers. Not likely to give up my Flickr, even though it's expensive. I am looking at uh, Piwigo, which is a basically Flickr competitor, but open source, and I host it myself. Um, so I may move to that at some point or duplicate on that because I want to have, have a backup more or less and something I can control. We'll see. But if you just want to see in a more casual way my photos, because my Flickr is like my backup of everything. It's got 45,000 pictures and like it's it's crazy. But if you want to see my like, oh, I went out for coffee. Oh, basically my vlog, but in picture form, um, I've mostly been putting that on Instagram and I put that up every day on the show, you know, Ziff Traveler uh, at Instagram. And I'm not getting rid of that, right? But um, uh, we announced uh, yesterday that we're starting to use here, Nikogram. This is a Nicaraguan uh, uh, just for the country. I mean, anyone, anyway, all my viewers certainly would be welcome on there. It's not. It's not that it's like hard limited, but it's a. It's a. 
uh, Instagram world that is designed and intended to be for people in Nicaragua, people interested in Nicaragua, pictures of Nicaragua, people traveling in Nicaragua, things about Nicaragua. The understanding is that when you're on it, there's a certain Nicaraguan context to what you're doing. So, uh, but because that's where I live and this just makes sense. And I think it's fantastic to support, um, uh, both the product is from the open source world and it's from the Fediverse for those who know what that is. Um, if, if you're, uh, following all the, the fallout of Twitter and stuff that's going on, uh, there's been a lot of talk suddenly of this Fediverse. It's been around a long time. I've been using it for probably a decade, um, but not in this way and not with this kind of service. Uh, and it's it's kind of like taking Twitter and Instagram and those things and making it that uh, areas can have their own servers and you don't have to pick Instagram, for example, and then say, oh, I don't like that company, or I don't like their policies, or I don't like, because because Instagram used to be for photographers, and then they moved away and said, no, we're not for photographers, we're, we're like uh, we're like TikTok, we're for, for short videos, and Nikogram is not, that is, ju it's just for photos. You can probably do some kind of, and it, but it, they don't do the video stories, they don't do the video thing, like it's photos and photo stories. There are photo stories, so something, but it's not uh, it, so it's got the ephemeral stories, right? They last for one day kind of thing. Um, and then the photos that are like, and then they have a portfolio feature I haven't played with yet. Um, but so kind of like what Instagram was supposed to be, what it claimed to be when we signed up for it, uh, Nikogram is more like that. Just a place to put. So if you're interested in finding a way to follow my photos and see what's going on and just, you know, get the same expanded vlog experience, go check out at Scott Allen Miller, just like my name here, at nikagram.com. And if you are already on the Fediverse and you have a client or a system that is able to talk to a pixel fed server, which a lot of you easily do, then I am just at Scott Allen Miller at nikagram.com and you don't have to get an account on nikagram if you're on some you know an american server or a spanish server or a canadian server you can that's the great thing about the fediverse is you can just look someone up from another server and connect so all of the the world connects together creating one giant cohesive system even though the individuals may be based in different countries may have different um, concepts and contexts and uh, moderation policies and those kinds of things so it's really flexible i really like it as a model it's a little bit a little bit different to get used to so i'm gonna i've been showing the link for that on the show, and I did a short uh, to, to announce that I was using it and, and to get the word out. It's very new. We we're some of the first to hop on it. Um, and uh, the, the idea is, is that it's just a photo sharing site. So it's different than other things. Uh, it's there to get um, uh, really looking for a lot of like bands and, and restaurants and stuff. That's who they need involved mostly. I mean, everyone's welcome, obviously. Um, so that those places can, can, those are who's posting pictures all the time and have a lot of things to post. Uh, and, and it's a great spot for that. In the same vein, that was all a lead up. That was not even the thing I was going to say. <laughs> In the same vein, uh, it should be at the time you're seeing this, Nika Loro is uh, is going live uh, and is brand new and is going to be maybe not even completely done but pretty close at least usable uh, and that is just in the same way of all those things that I just said about about Nikagram are also true of Nika Loro but instead of being an Instagram replacement it is a replacement for Twitter or X or whatever it's called today I it's hilarious that it was renamed X at the time that everyone's leaving it literally making it your X messaging platform uh, so it's it, now that now that Twitter's over and has died and people are flocking and if you see any of the news people say that the the major winner in the whole death of Twitter death of X thing is Mastodon if you're like what what is Mastodon Nicoloro is the Mastodon instance for Nicaragua. Just like Nicogram, if you want to use that as your server, go sign up. It's free. Be a member of, of the universe here in Nicaragua. But if you're on Mastodon.social, for example, the big one in the United States, you don't have to have a separate account on Nicoloro to use it. You don't have to. If you're on Mastodon anywhere in the world, you can uh, follow people like me on Nicoloro. And for those who don't know, Loro is Spanish for parrot. That's why it ties into today's topic. It is because parrots talk and Twitter used to be a bird tweeting. What could be more appropriate? What is a better uh, symbology of, of replacing Twitter with something from Nicaragua than a parrot? It 
it's absolutely genius. Um, so you can go follow me at Scott Allen Miller at Nicoloro.com from any Mastodon instance anywhere in the world. So it doesn't matter what language you're in, it doesn't matter where you're located, and you'll get my updates the same type of updates that I would put on Twitter, which is mostly like talking about news, talking about things going on, talking about trips I'm taking, that kind of stuff. And of course, there's apps, so you can have these things on your on your phone. There's there's uh, the Mastodon official app. There's Ice Bucket that connects to both. Some apps will talk to both Nikogram and Nikoloro at the same time. So if you wanted accounts on both, so you could post to both, easy. If you only want to count on one but read from both people's things, you can do that. So flexible. The flexibility adds a little bit of complication, to be sure. Um, I've been trying to figure out some of the things about it, and sometimes I'm like, ah, what have I done? Um, and I'm trying out different clients to see what I like, but uh, overall, I'm loving the ecosystem. I'm loving that you can cross things, you know, and, and follow from other servers, and there's millions of people on Mastodon Social in the United States, and being able to follow all of that, but represent as, um, you know, living in Nicaragua and being in the Nicaraguan context, really cool. So uh, anyone who I'm going to be posting from now on, and now's the time to put it down here so you can see uh, my my Nicoloro address. Um, so I'm going to be showing those on the episode. So anytime you want to connect, if you're on Mastodon already, uh, you can connect to those. If you are on uh, a pixel fed, you can connect to those. If you want to sign up at one of these, those are free, go do so. And then you can find me that way. Lots of things, lots of, and I showed on the episode yesterday, Marcella is on um, uh, Nikogram, and you can find her on there, and it's just a great way to, to, the one is to look at pictures, the other is to get uh, status updates or whatever, like, you, it's like Twitter. Um, and uh, I'm excited that that's a thing going on. It's fun and it's different and I needed something because Twitter has gone away, um, and so this is, this is kind of answering that for me, and I don't really find Instagram very fun, and I hate that Instagram is full of messaging. I hate that both of them are full of messaging. I don't need more messaging apps. I need fewer, um, and I hate that there's a sprawl of ways to reach me in a million different things. Not that I don't want people to reach me. I just want people to reach me in a way that I can handle. Because those of you who have tried to reach out to me, you know it is a struggle to get me to respond. Partially because, and this is not really exaggerating, I have something between a dozen and 20 different channels that people reach out to me on every day and just tracking where conversations are, who is who, how to get back to them, and some of them are really hard to follow, like YouTube. Like, it's great when you just make a post here, or you make a response, and you're like, hey, Scott, like this episode. Great, I'm like, yes, thank you. You know, it's easy. You say something, I say something. If you respond to that again, YouTube like doesn't tell me. I have to go through a whole bunch of work scrolling around and just seeing if there's anything I haven't seen. There's like no obvious way. There, there is, but it takes a lot of steps and a lot of work to find if someone has responded to me. So there's no quick way to respond. It's not efficient and, and it's really easy to miss things. And to a point where I have an assistant just posting some social media stuff, not, not doing responses. But I have, if you're emailing, that goes to a group of us. So it's, it's basically always me responding, but there's, there's people watching it. And like, if I'm not there, like someone could respond. Uh, but other channels, if you're reaching out on like Instagram, it is really hard for me to track you down on Instagram. Like those conversations are, are hard for me. I, I want people to be able to reach me. I really do. Um, so I'm trying my best, but those who have tried know I struggle with it. It's very hard. So I'm glad with these platforms, they are really not about messaging. They do not make that easy. They do not make it obvious. And, and Nicoloro doesn't even offer messaging. Uh, it's only post. Uh, the Nikogram does technically have messaging, but I tried it. It's useless. Like, I, And that sucks, right? It's terrible that it has it and it's bad, but... Uh, but in no way is someone going to try to use it as a messaging platform. It's just, it might as well not exist. Uh, so they do exactly what I like and, and leave messaging to other places like email where I need it. So that's an exciting thing going on today. If you're interested at all, please go check it out. But I needed to explain. So when you see these links uh, and these emblems on, uh, on, the, on the show that you know what they are and you know why I'm putting them up there. And they'll be linked, of course, down in the description. I'm going to add it to my standard daily post so that anyone who anytime wants to get involved or track me down or whatever, you can go or just follow along, right? You're, the real thing is follow and get more information, be more connected. Uh, because like my YouTube, yeah, I do shorts. Sometimes I'm out getting coffee, I'll put, but I really can't edit it when I'm out. Like it's real basic. So, and, and it's not always something I can upload. So you don't get that much. But if I'm out doing pictures, well, I'm more likely to be able to upload that while I'm out doing something. And now that I had, like back when I actually had Twitter, back when Twitter was a thing, 
I would post status updates all the time. Oh, I'm, I'm driving to blah, blah, blah. I'm checking out this cool thing. Look at this thing I'm doing. And it can be interesting to connect more in real time and like, oh, there's an earthquake, but we're okay. Like all that stuff, that's where that'll go. Really excited to have that back because that was a big thing I used to do. And then Twitter just fell apart and got really toxic and weird. And, and then Elon Musk took over and it got really toxic and weird. And it seems like he's shutting it down. And now you have like limit, like it's weird, right? So none of that. So glad to have something and that it has this Fediverse thing connecting everything together and be Nicaragua context, like how cool is that? So if you're looking at relocating, if you're looking at uh, a lot of travel here, if you're just really interested in the show or uh, in, in the, the lifestyle down here, maybe it makes sense. Go sign up, check it out. It's free. It's just an account like anywhere else, uh, but it can be the one that you use and identify as a friend of Nicaragua. And eventually I bet there'll be t-shirts and stuff. So that would be cool. Also, as I'm recording this, huge order of our first batch of t-shirts is being made. And in theory, we're gonna see them on Friday. I'm recording this on a Wednesday. So from the time you see this, hopefully in 72 hours-ish, uh, we may have the first t-shirts from our channel haul. Very excited to see those. We'll see what happens. And that is a lot. That is our stuff for the day. It's all parrot themed today. How cool is that? Uh, so uh, go check out those sites. Take a moment, check them out. All the support. Show Nicaragua that you're interested in this stuff, that you want to have that context. You want to, it's neat. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at the link above, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. All of that helps support the channel directly. It goes directly to me and makes a huge, huge difference. If you're looking for uh, any of the assistance through those channels, I talked about, like, I want to talk to people, I want to help with relocation, but wow, am I overwhelmed? Info at relocatenicaragua.com. That does come to me and my team. Uh, that is the place that I'm most likely to respond. There are sometimes things get missed. If you don't have email, that'll cause problems. Uh, but that's that's generally good. And uh, whether it's, you know, you just want a phone consultation or something much bigger, you want me to be a personal tour guide and take you around the country. We're actually doing that. We're setting that up. We've got people doing that. That is really fantastic stuff. Uh, Marcella works with people and, and does like, uh, you know, help set up their house, get their internet going. Um, you know, she'll come and, and shop for furniture for you, get your house stocked with food, whatever you need. All those services uh, are things that are available. And and if you're looking for help with contracts and all those things, we have, we have people for everything at this point. So reach out, send us an email. We'd love to talk to you. As always, like, subscribe, share on social media, Tell your friends about the show. Tell your friends that you can find them or that they can find you instead on uh, Nika Graham or Nika Loro, both. And I will see all of you with a parrot tomorrow. <laughs>